Okay, part 10 is about casting, and casting creates an additional reference to an object with the promised type. Okay, so I want you to look at the main method here, and I want you to think, do you think this is going to work? Again, programming languages are designed by humans, so they're supposed to make sense. So your intuition is actually really important. You should pause here, but I'll keep going. Okay, I have my main method here, and it creates a variable name C of type cat. I've got it here in my main method, and it references a new tiger object. That's my new tiger object. Okay, so the, the key problem is that I want to use, I want to call the swim method on the tiger object, but I only right now have a cat variable. Okay, you're like calling this is a little bit contrived. That's fair, but this is a general principle where I want to use this to introduce casting. Okay, so uh, what I show you here is I'm creating a new variable named T of type tiger. I'll update my picture so that I have something that looks like that. So I've got a pocket that can hold a variable, and this variable's name is T. And now what I'm saying here is these parentheses are important. The parentheses are saying I promise that the variable C is of type tiger or a subclass, okay? So this is what's called a cast when I put it in parentheses. You maybe have seen it with ints. Uh, I promise that types, the, the variable that C is referencing is something of tiger or a subclass. And this assignment statement, this equals, what it does is it says, hey, make a copy of the variable uh, in C. So make a copy of the value in C so I make a copy of that remote control. And what a copy of a remote control means is that it is referencing the same object. So I make a copy of whatever's in C, I put it in T, and to have that actually work, I need to promise that C was referencing something of type tiger. Now that I have a variable of type tiger, I can call t.swim. Because remember, we use the type of the variable to figure out if the method will compile. And then when we actually call the method, we're able to go to the objects class to look for that method. Okay, my next task for you is, that was a little bit verbose. Do you think you could write it in just one line? So try and invent what you think it would look like.